I just want to welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas. I'm your host today. And today we are in the ladies' room. But don't let that scare you, James. It's okay that you're here in the ladies' room with us. We're letting, we're letting some guys in here. So, But, you know, it's that place where... Sometimes women talk about things that we might not just say anywhere, you know, things that maybe we can only say to each other because we've had some shared experiences. So here we have the opportunity to talk about it, maybe vent some frustrations, give advice to one another, and come away with some new ideas or some validation. So we like to say that in the ladies' room, we go there. So our session today lasts for, you know, somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour. And if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our panelists and the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. And if you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I'd be happy to share it for you. So our topic today in the ladies room is closing the loop, how to share mission critical information with those who need to know. And this came about uh, because of a conversation that I was having with my colleague and my special guest, Lori Campbell. And Lori is the Director of Operations with Connected Women of Influence. So she's my, one of my cohorts here at, at CWI. And she's also the owner of LAC Solutions, where she helps businesses manage and maintain their customer relationships. And we were talking earlier this week, I think it was maybe last week, about what happens if, it, it, this kind of came to light just with things the way they are right now, with everybody working from home, or maybe somebody getting ill, or somebody being stuck in another state or another country. So what happens if you are the only one who knows all the passwords to everything. What if you're the only one who does all of the online banking and so everything is stored in your computer? What if you're the only one who knows who do you use for pest control and who do you use for appliance maintenance and, and all of that kind of stuff? And it all happens to be stored in your computer. Like mine is. I know that I can go to Comcast Business and it automatically pops up because everything is stored in there. But would somebody else know that? And, you know, we were talking about the people that you live with, but what about, what about your parents? What about um, other family members if something were to happen to them? And, and of course, we don't like to think about that. Um, but given the situation that we're in, you know, who knows, maybe something like that could happen. So uh, we were kind of talking about back in the old days. Um, and I remember when I got my first job and my first apartment, my dad gave me this, this little book and it had folders inside of it. And it was called most important papers. <laughs> and, and I guess I was supposed to keep utility bills and my will, you know, when I'm a kid or whatever, you know, stuff like that in this folder. And I know that he had one. Um, but those days are kind of long gone. And then, and then you yeah. start thinking, well, maybe it would be nice if they weren't so long gone. So that's what kind of led to our discussion. So Lori, you want to chime in here and share? What yeah, we, Patty. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. We were talking about many different scenarios because it's not just you know, our parents or anything, because as Patty said, uh, recently my father, I had to take over paying his bills, but he had never, he didn't even have a computer. So nothing was, you know, nothing was on the computer, but he was in uh, Michigan and I'm in California. So I had to pay his bills remotely, but I uh, was able to uh Sign into his bank account with his credit, with his social security number because he had never done it before. But if he had and he was not, you know, coherent enough to give me any of that information, it would have been very difficult. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, you know, many different scenarios where, uh, like my sister had, her husband had a massive heart attack and had to have bypass and was not able to communicate. He was, and he handled all of their bills. 
she didn't know where anything was, how to access anything. So it's, you know, and I'm in a situation where I have a roommate, but I pay all the bills. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't know where, you know, all the bills were and things like that. So how do we make that information available to our loved ones or significant others so that, um, you know, they can be prepared to take over if something happens to us where we can no longer do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so what, what we, what kind of led to this discussion was what are some best practices? What are some things that other people know that, um, that, that, that we could share with each other or, Hey, here's what I did. You know, I created a file or I created a book or I created a whatever, you know, and, so what are some of those things? I have found that um, getting a bunch of people together and brainstorming about some of these things is the best way, you know, because somebody's done a little bit of it, somebody's done a little bit more, and then, you know, somewhere we come up with, with what are some things that would be a really good idea. So there is no agenda here tonight other than just, hey, let's, let's group solve this. Let's, you know, let's do some, some uh, creative problem solving around this. And Lori, are you going to maybe take some notes if somebody's got a great idea? And at the end yeah. of this call, I'd be happy to send it out to all of you guys, you know, so that everybody gets it, you know, as well. And, and that way we can, um, we can all share the wealth, share, share some good ideas. So who's got something that Carly, I know you can't hang with us the whole time. So I'm going to put you on the spot and make you contribute first. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> well, this is actually something on my list, um, personally and professionally, kind of more personally to work on during these times. I have this little like thing. Ah, okay. Well, you can't see because of the thingy. Yeah. Yeah. Your I background kind of, is. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I kind of started putting like all my passwords and stuff like that in, but you know, it's scribbled because you're having to change your password 10 times. And so one of my yeah. projects is I wanted to like create like an Excel spreadsheet with, you know, something a little more organized, maybe laminated, but it's hard because like I said, the passwords are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And then what happens if someone gets a hold of this? Yes. Your whole life, your whole life right. is there for anyone. So like, do you put it in a safe, which I don't have? I mean, you know, it's just, it's a great topic and great questions that I don't even know really where to start myself. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, having passwords, I think, is the number one thing and letting people know what they are. Because if someone can't get into your computer and pay your online bills or anything like that, I mean, that's that's the first holdup for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know if you're talking about just, what was the topic of this session? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I say, just so I stay focused because I tend to get off on tangents. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just what is the critical information that we need to to share with people? You know, how do we close that gap? Um, oh. with information so yeah well, and I don't know if this is related but um, something I'm gonna do which I should know better because I'm in the real estate business um, like I just purchased a home and of course I don't have it in a trust yet mm -hmm. it's still in my name because it is you know $800 to put it in a truck to have a trust drawn up and this is my first asset sadly on my own since my divorce to be honest um, but I finally buckled down and I'm gonna put my house in a trust so yeah. I think that's really important because, you know, um, we worry about our assets and our bank accounts and all these things. But if you don't have your house in a trust, if something happens to you and you're on title alone or, you know, the surviving spouse, if something happens to both of you, then it has to go through probate, which means your relatives can't sell the home um, until it goes through the courts. And it could take up to six months before you could even put it into contract mm -hmm. or going to escrow. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's important too. Those yeah, <laughs> I think we were talking about that. And I think, you know, I think we all know, like I'm with you, Carly, I have been had that on my to do list forever. And I we have a member of, of CWI that's a lawyer that takes care of trusts. And, and so oh, she sent me all the paperwork, but you have a lot of decisions to make about who you want to name in the trust. And so I think that's a whole different like <laughs> conversation. Yeah, that's a whole if different, something happens yeah, to you, plan, right, yeah. what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. So I estate think we, planning's a whole, yeah, that would be great to yeah. get a topic on and, and end of life decisions and all those kinds of things. You know? Yeah, I'd probably tap exactly. Into a lot, I'd probably tap into a lot of our membership as well to kind of draw them in and get all their feedback too yeah. and give them a time to shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, we were, I think we were wanting to more focus on like what in the interim, like what if, you know, 
you were just incapacitated or not able to access things to just keep your, your bills going and keep things so mm -hmm. you don't have issues that come up because we hear about so many people that, you know, lose their significant other or they're not able to give you the information so you can take care of things while they're unable. And we were talking about this too. It's kind of interesting if we, it would be interesting to take a toll on like how many people have everything in online bill pay, how many people automate all that, you know, right. and it's typically one or the other. It's not necessarily always the woman that does it. It's not necessarily always the man. It's really, it's just however your, your personality in your relationship is, is set up. And some people even share the bills, you know, 50, 50 and don't have joint accounts and all mm -hmm. these kind of things. So how do you, you know, how do you effectively, like you said, document all that, and 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 protect it like you were saying carly so you yeah. know you don't want to put your passwords mm -hmm. down because anyone could see it and take it you know exactly right. yeah like tape it to your monitor so if somebody breaks in the house they've got yes. it right there <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i wonder know, if yeah i wonder if like you know even just setting up like an excel spreadsheet of just like all of your credit cards all of your utility companies a contact phone number and your account number and then just having that discussion of like a safe place to put it. And it could be like, you know, inside the, um, you know, when friends and influence people book on the bookshelf, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, just somewhere right. that the whole family kind of knows where it's stuck and then yeah. there's something to look at. And then at least, at least you would know at that point or another good thing too, I've heard people do in their wallets, like they'll take um, pictures of their credit cards or the back or just so you know what's floating out there because if you don't get paper statements anymore, you don't even know what credit cards your parents or siblings might even have open. Exactly. So if you have all those listed out on a spreadsheet or something, at least we would know who to call. Say, hey, listen, this person's not available. Is their account current? How can I intercept this? You know, at least a place to start to know what's out there, you know? I don't know. Yeah, that's a whole, yeah, that's exactly. a whole nother, um thought uh carly is like if you were trying to make these calls on behalf of somebody else you know not knowing what they had um you know we had a a really silly situation that came up um we had hired a pest control company when we first moved into this house that we're in right now and pest control doesn't typically come out every month they come out like every three months okay. and so my husband had hired this company and then a couple of months later somebody came to the door i didn't know that he had hired them so somebody else came to the door a different company and i thought it sounded pretty good and they said we'll do a you know a first one right now you don't have to pay for it and then we'll set you up on a you know so he comes home and i'm like hey i got these guys they came and they just and he's like well i've already got a pest control person it's like okay well i didn't know that and so then when it came time to we got to cancel one of these we couldn't remit their names were very similar and right. so we were literally like combing through emails and and all kinds of things trying to figure out who was the pest control company that we wanted to keep it was ridiculous in this yeah. day and age and for two <laughs> very technical people <laughs> to be going who did we hire you know and and we finally figured it out but still it was it was it was just ridiculous you know and yeah. we've got um, like all of my passwords are stored on my computer in a password program. Hmm. All of Yeah, I was going to say that too. I have it on my phone in a, a key pass software yeah. that you, yeah, you know. Exactly. And all of his are in a different program on his computer. So, you know, patting myself on the back. Oh, it's all in this program. What if he can't get into my computer? Right. You know, yeah, someone needs a password to your computer. Exactly. Exactly. And like, where do you hide that inside, like inside a pantry door, you know, or no, something like totally to the monitor. Them. What's that? <laughs> stick it to the monitor. <laughs> I know. Well, no, I, I mean, I'm thinking you could, like, you know, you could, uh, like mm -hmm. create the spreadsheet that you're talking about, but password protect the file. Like, so you put it in a USB drive and you hide the USB drive somewhere that you agree That's upon. True. Like you were talking about, not having a piece of paper printed in a book somewhere, but maybe you have a, a USB drive that you could pass, password protect the, the drive, but you could also like save it to PDF and you can always password protect the PDF file. So that's, I guess what everyone that's does now, yeah, I guess what everyone does um, is choose the Google Docs. 
Mm -hmm. You know, you could have a Google Doc account. That way you could access it from any device and share the access, you know, with someone if you needed to. Right. But at least they can maybe yeah. pull it up on another device, which is nice because even if your computer crashes or something, I want to start getting more towards that actually, mm -hmm. the Google Docs or I hate relying on the cloud though, because I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm so old school. Like I want it on a zip drive. I want it like a, a hard piece of it. Like what if the whole world crashes on this, I, this cloud and then we don't have that, but everyone's doing the Google Docs and I'm not, I'm good at it. I'm this. with you on that, Carly. <laughs> Sorry, my coffee's kicking in, so I'm getting all excited. <laughs> hey, Cheryl, I want to um, welcome you. Thanks for joining us. And we're just talking about ways that we can make sure that that crucial information is shared with, with our family members, our significant others, in the event that something were to happen and we were incapacitated or unable to access our bank or, or pay a bill or, or what have you, you know, and so we... Um, just thought we would do a group brainstorm on this. So anything you want to contribute, just feel free to jump in there. That goes for you, Nicole and Melissa as well. And uh, yeah, I, I actually do use, after changing phones a few years ago, twice and losing all my passwords, mm -hmm. I was forced to think about going back to a hard copy, right? And it's like, there's no, I have too many contacts for that now. <clears throat> so now what I do is I do, use the Google Docs. I have all my, uh, in the notes on my phone in the private area, I have all my passwords here. And then uh, I have it on Google Docs so that I can access it there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the flash drive sounds good too. I just think I would forget where I put it. <laughs> 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 well, even, even taking the the time to go through and put that list together because I, I, I was thinking uh, for myself I even when I did my taxes I created a spreadsheet with all of my bills you know everything from home to business to everything so I thought well that's a really good place to start because you can forget about mm -hmm. you know your monthly bills are pretty typically you know we all have similar bills we don't <laughs> we wouldn't know what everybody has but then there's those not, you know, semi-annual or annual bills that you don't think about. So, you know, maybe we, if you don't have a list now of all the things you have to pay and keep up with, like maybe at tax time is a good time to start thinking about that if that's a base to start with and go, okay, here's all my bills. Now, how do I pay each one of them? Because I know for me, mine's probably 50-50 where I have an online banking that Autom I automatically get the bill mm -hmm. and I, I don't let it automatically pay it if it, you know, because I, I'm just a control freak. So I want to <laughs> push the button to say, okay, pay that bill, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, but some of them won't send it to your online banking. So it's a mixture. So that's another thing to me. That's a further complication. Right. Like we were talking about in the old days, you could, if something happened to one of your parents, you could go to their house and their mail would be stacked up and you would go through the mail and pay the bills. Well, that's, nobody's getting that mail anymore, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Melissa, I, put that. I have a spreadsheet like that too. And I, I have my monthly bills and I just started doing that recently. But then I also have bills like my car registration and then I'll put in parentheses, you know, when it's due May or something. And right. then next to like my credit cards, I'll put in parentheses auto. And that way they like, all know which ones are um so it's a work in progress but you're totally right like I'm working yeah. on it now at these times melissa put something in and the then, chat um she said i have an excel spreadsheet it's printed occasionally it's in my safe with copies of my debit credit cards and passport mm -hmm. birth certificates copy of estate planning i'm not married a dear friend knows the code to my safe and has mm -hmm. access to my house so that's another way of making sure that wow. Yeah, you you've got it together, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess well, the I thing even, I like uh, about what I like about doing things electronically, whether it's stored in a file or in the cloud in a file in the cloud or or what, is that because things do change and it makes it easier to just go yes. in and update a password or update an account yeah. number or or update the amount, you know, that something is um, yeah. then it, it's a little bit easier to do that. But occasionally you know, it's, you know, I think one thing that's come to me or come to my mind through all of this is that 
this is data I need to share with somebody. So like Melissa said, you know, sharing it with a friend and, and making sure that they've got access to it, but just share, you know, hey, sit down, let's talk about this. Here's where all my stuff is. Just today, I, I have, um, uh, my oldest son is married and, and has my three, my three grandchildren live with him. <laughs> Let's just say that. He, he and his wife control my three grandchildren. But, um, you know, I was thinking, wait a minute, do they, do they have a will? Do they, do they have wills? Do they have a trust? You know, it's, we haven't really talked about it. And the odd thing is, is that he was very, very sick back in February. And right when COVID first started coming about, I said to him, I said, do you think it's possible that that's what you had, have slash had? Because he was just beginning to recover. He was sick for like eight weeks. And, you know, so it makes you start thinking about, wow, are they prepared? They're young. They're invincible, right? But right. who knows what? I don't know anything about any of their stuff. Yeah. Very true. Mm -hmm. I had the well, same even we were, I was with gonna, my son, too. Yeah. <clears throat> when you were talking to uh, somebody, I think Cheryl said that you have um, software and stuff like that. I have one of those, uh, we were talking about passwords, so I have that pass, key pass software uh, on my phone. But then I worry, my phone's getting older, I worry about my phone crashing, so how do you back that up? Well. I did the research and found out that you can, there is a version that you can have on your PC, but you can't easily sync them up. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can do it on your PC, I think, and sync it to your phone. But like if I'm doing something, typically I would update the phone. And I found recently, because I went and checked it, compared the two, that I have changed many passwords on my phone version of the software, but not on the PC version. So like even getting a process to keep yourself, you know, accurate on your backups is tough, you know? Well, well the, I think the, the thing really about when you have the, the, um, the Google Docs, when you type in there, it uh, automatically updates. So whether you're using a Google Docs on your phone or you're using it on your PC, you have, you still have all the data updated. That's because good. And you just have it automatically saves it. It automatically saves it. That's good. Yeah, and, and you I have it, it on a spreadsheet, Cheryl. I don't have a spreadsheet. <laughs> I just have it listed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I. It's funny that um, it sounds, Lori, like your phone is kind of your primary, and everything else is a backup to your phone. And I've never trusted my phone. I've, I've had yeah. so much trouble with my phone. And it's now getting to where, it, you know, I think Apple is going to force me to get an upgrade because yeah. it, it's a it's a success, you know, and like now we're on 10. I just hate doing it. I hate, I hate yeah. getting upgrades on my phone. So, um, but yeah, it's, to me, the computer is my primary and everything else is a backup to that. But but I like what you said, Cheryl, about using Google Docs because I do access that on my phone. I access it on my computer, all my computers. Okay. So, yeah. And then I guess maybe just print it out, you know, once a, mm -hmm. every six months. I have, a, I, I have a hard copy of it too. Yeah, I think the I used to print them all the time, and then it was so frustrating because it was constantly changing. So I kind of gave up. But now I'm kind of readdressing it, hoping to go to the Google Doc method. But then I still feel like I should print it either like every month end or every six months just to have like a uh -huh. working copy that, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. that's what you know, I do. Yeah, I think that's probably a really over. good idea. And then, right. And then what if you don't, if something happens, you don't have internet access, you can't get to Google Docs. So you, you definitely have to have oh, some form of a right backup. Yep. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, because we rely on that so much. We take it for granted. Uh -huh. Yeah. To me, that's the, still... that's the downside of having it not save on your computer as well. Yeah. Exactly what I'm talking about. Good thinking. Yeah. I saw a meme on Facebook today that, that was talking about my life priorities now. And it was, you know, it was, it was internet, um, sweatpants. It, it was all these things, you know, your job, um, a nice car, you know, all these different things and sweatpants and internet connection had gone, you know, like, like way up. And like right now, internet connectivity is, is critical. I mean, we've oh been, 
my husband always works from home. I primarily work from home, but, but occasionally on site as well with a client. But um, <laughs> to be, for all of us to be online at the same time, you know, is, is just becoming a real challenge. And so uh -huh. not having access is making you think about what if I couldn't get to those things? What if I couldn't get to online bill pay? What if I couldn't do, you know, some of these things, but I don't know. Patty, I'm doing a, um, a marketing challenge <laughs> and I have to do my gratitude list. So thank you. I'm adding Wi-Fi to my gratitude list today. Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Reliable <laughs> Wi-Fi. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, kind of to go back to the old school idea, um, my, my dad had, um, you know, all these files and, and so forth and lists of things that he was doing. And then uh, he, he began having kind of a downslide into um, Alzheimer's and so forth, you know, and, and we had to, my brother and I had to make sure that we had all of his, all of his accounts, all of his, his insurance, all of that kind of stuff, you know, all in one place. And, um, and then my sister-in-law gradually took over all the bill pay and all that kind of stuff. And like you said, Lori, we had to make sure that my dad wasn't trying to log into stuff, you know, because she had access of things. And, um, but it was, it was a real, it was an eye opener, you know, to realize, even to look at, at his, his world had gotten very small, you know, but thinking about how many insurance policies do you have that you have forgotten about, you know, how many times, like back in the day when you, you know, got that, that $1,500 insurance comp, um, policy from JC Penney or, you know, whatever, are, are those out I'm there floating around that. somewhere? And I worked for a company way, way, way back. I mean, I, I left that company in 2004, but there was, I had a small pension with them that had dated back to, you know, to many, many years. And I was like, what am I going to do if I can't, if I can't figure out how to find those guys when it comes time, you know, to, to make good on that. And it was, it was a real challenge. I mean, fortunately they kept track of me, which I have no idea how they did that, but, <laughs> but they found me. And then I was like, Oh, wow. Okay. Well, this is, this is interesting, you know, to that they've got that kind of information too. Yeah. Patty, you brought up a good point on the contrary. What about, you know, our people who are actually W-2, which I know most of you are self-employed, but um, let's say you're getting a pay stub, or well, I guess anyone could do it from their 401k, but 401k loans. Let's mm -hmm. say you're getting like a 401k loan and you're getting, you're not getting pay stubs anymore because you're getting electronic pay stubs. Mm -hmm. And like me personally, I have to log on to my 401k company who handles all that stuff. It's called Paychex. And I have the login information. My, my um, company is no longer going to be issuing the pay stubs. So no one would know if I had a 401k loan mm -hmm. that was, and then if I wasn't working, the payments wouldn't be made. So what would happen to that? For example. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And Melissa put in the chat that, that they're having this issue with, with her father passed away in October and they're still finding all those little policies here and there, especially people of a certain age, you know, like, and I don't want to tell you that I'm sort of of that certain age, but <laughs> people that are older than me, um, that, that took out some of those, or you didn't even know you took them out. That's the thing is yeah. they were part of a credit card. They were part of something else, you know, that they just kind of pop up out of, out of nowhere. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I had to go through, uh, it was interesting. My dad, ran out of money we had to put him in um, assisted living and he ran out of money and the learning process for getting him on Medicaid to help they look at you know we had to know you know everything that he had because you have to have less than two thousand dollars in order to even apply and then they do these searches well they found some old CD that he had that he cashed out many years previous, like 10, 12 years, but we didn't know anything about this. Mm -hmm. um, but the, in the search for his application for assistance, they found this and they wanted us to prove that he had cashed it in at some point. So it's funny because, you know, I don't have the answer for us how to keep track of that ourselves because you figure how many years back do you have to go 
you know, I mean, we would all have a separate, you know, storage unit just with all, <laughs> all our yeah. paperwork and things like that. But it was uh, crazy in the sense that, you know, how, how would we possibly know anything about that? And the bank wouldn't talk to me because he, but he wasn't coherent enough to tell the bank, you know, so anyway, it's a learning and having that power. Somebody mentioned the durable power of attorney in the chat. Uh, I think Carly mm-hmm. did, but uh, that I learned also is that you need to have um, a financial durable power of attorney yes. specifically. And, you know, anyways, yeah, that we found kind of it out with, with my husband's parents. Yeah. But uh, am I the only one that at tax time, I'm going, I'm trying to remember certain things that I did during the year. It's only a year and I'm still trying to remember, <laughs> you know, what did we, did we do that? Did we not do that? And, um, yeah, we, I do the same thing. I try to keep everything in one place especially since starting this business, that's been one of my biggest challenges with all the things that um, you purchase, you know, like the online, whatever that you purchase for the business Mm -hmm. and trying to keep all those things in one place. Mm -hmm. Because I forget those at the end of the year, all the travel that you do for business, you know? Yes. And and I think that, that we have become, kind of going back to my pest control story, We've become um, accustomed to our vendors keeping track of us and letting us know when things are due or, um, you know, and, and instead of us being proactive about that, I just, you know, it's, it's that whole idea of like, well, if they need me, they'll find me kind of. Uh-huh. And that's not very smart. <laughs> that's not very practical. So when it, you know, I'm, I'm tired of, we just switched to a different tax person, a CWI person, but we just switched to a tax person and a new tax person. And I'm like, I'm doing this different. <coughs> She's very much online, you know, here's a folder, throw everything in this folder and I'll grab it as I need it. And, and I'm like, oh man, I'm digging this because that will keep me organized as well, you know, with having to keep all of this stuff in place. But mm-hmm. And that's one of the downsides to uh, all this automatic automatic pay, because when you know they're just going to take the payment, you like well, get my eyes off of it. I know that you know on the twenty second of the month this is coming out, but after a while you you just you know you have so many other things you're not thinking about it. And a couple of times I've caught where payments were they've been taking more payments than they were supposed to. And I just have to sit down one day and say, oh, let me just go through all these things. It's like, oh, wait a minute. (laughs) Uh, Give me that money back, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? So, and and on the other topic you were talking about, like with the um, credit union, I have a house in Texas also. And I went home about three weeks ago and uh, I was going through some mail because I have a son that doesn't want me to sell the house. So he, he's a basketball player overseas. And so he, he does the house. Well, you know, but I'm still getting mail there every now and then. And I found a statement from a credit union that I had uh, an account that I started on my daughter when she was a senior in high school. I opened an account for her. And I forgot about that account after I moved uh, to California. Uh, it's been there. My daughter is 36 years old. Okay. So <laughs> Well, it's funny. Yeah, so they, and I'm like, of, Ashley, you have an account. You have money in this account. <laughs> well, the thing is, too, if you're handling an estate, it's not a bad idea to check um, the state um, website because they estate funds a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So sometimes you can do searches, I think, and you can find out if there is funds like that that have been estated to the state that you yeah. can actually claim, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm like, you have money. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking I'll find some out there, but there never is anything there. <laughs> Not I, I with you. One every month I check that website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, but, you know, I think that, that there's, when it comes to online bill pay, all of these things are so easy. They're so convenient. I do all of them. There are some vendors that I go ahead and give them permission to just withdraw from my account on a regular basis, especially if it's a bill I don't want to ever be late. 
but there are other vendors I would never give them that access exactly. because it's a variable bill maybe and I'm not really sure what it would be and I want to see what it's going to look like before. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, making sure somebody knows that, you know, making sure that that my significant other or, or my son or my daughter or whatever isn't assuming all my stuff is being paid that way, that they know what is and what isn't, you know, and so I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward the idea of, of the Google Docs, like, like Cheryl was talking about, because I could access that almost from anywhere. Mm -hmm. You could password protect it so that anybody could get to it, you know, that you wanted to be able to get to it. Mm -hmm. um, you could share it from your phone at the last, mm -hmm. you know, at the last spur of a moment. Yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you a funny story though. We, um, my, my middle son, um, this was years ago. We used to have a, a mortgage with Wells Fargo years ago. And uh, he opened a checking account that we co-signed for so that he could open the account. And so it looked as if it was our checking account. And he would log in to Wells Fargo and he would see his checking account information as well as our mortgage information. And he was a, a dumb young kid. He thought that we had that money in the bank, you know? So he made a comment to me about, man, you know, you've got $500,000 in the bank. And it's like, yeah, I wish <laughs> I owe $500,000 to the bank. Wait, who is this, Patty? <laughs> my son, my, oh, my middle, my middle son. But mm -hmm. it was so funny because of sharing, you know, sharing the account. But well, this is awesome. You guys, so, any, any other thoughts, other so ideas? Well, let me, uh, let's, I, I'm like a process person. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we would, do you, or would you keep a separate list of all your bills? Like, let's say all your bills and maybe, you know, who the payee is um, and maybe your account number. Okay. And how you pay it. Do you pay it automatically online? Do you write a check? Do you, you know, how do you, handle it so like that list and then maybe a separate list of things that you have passwords for that people would need so assuming it's not just your bank account if you mm -hmm. wanted to give someone access to that you know I keep, do a, they I keep need... a notebook I keep a notebook a little small memo notebook and it has every bill that I well not on my business I need to add some of these business things like the, um, you know, the Google, whatever, whatever else for business. I haven't put all those in there, but my main bills mm -hmm. I have in this little notebook, hard copy, copy. It has all the account numbers. And if they have a password that I have to have to get on or something, that's in that notebook. Mm -hmm. And so I don't need to use that because like I said, everything is, most of my things are online. So the things I won't put online, so if someone needed that, my husband knows about that notebook. Where do you keep it? Okay. I have a, um, a file, a little small file cabinet, but it's called for important papers. Is it locked? It has like my, my divorce decree. <laughs> it has my, <laughs> um, uh, the, the house, um, the deed to the house, you know, all those kind of things right. are in that box. Is it locked? I just worry about like if someone broke in the house and they got, that's why I keep stuff in weird places. Like if I'm going to hide some cash in the house, I'll put it like in a cookie jar in the kitchen, like up in a pantry, like in my protein shake in a Ziploc bag, but like a container that looks like it's food or something. Like, because I think like if someone broke in the house, they would go to like a place that said important documents. You know what I mean? They wouldn't so, have, they'd have to dig, honey. They wouldn't yeah, be okay, okay, yeah. So I'm always like, I'm like, where do my... Well, because my password book's right here, too, and I, I don't hide it. It's just right here, like, you know. Yeah, it's like, no, it's oh, not. They I would need have to figure to out where digging. to put mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'd have to be digging to find it. And it doesn't say that on the container, but my husband knows really that container has important stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Mm -hmm. Very smart. I can put stuff in different places. <laughs> then you because forget I'm you at that age place. now. Well, I cannot. <laughs> I say I'll put it here so I will remember, oh and I do not remember. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm trying to like start hiding like twenty dollar bills all over the house, like for yeah. emergencies or or hundred dollar bills. When my mother it. passed then away, I forget where I hide them. <laughs> yeah, my mother passed away many years ago. She, she um she had started having some signs of um, dementia. Oh, oh. And she started kind of hoarding newspapers and envelopes. Yeah. And back in the day, you know, women used to have these handkerchiefs that they would have money in and their bosom and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when she passed away, we couldn't just go through and throw one of those papers away. We were finding money and envelopes and oh, magazines and um, pattern, you know, the, the patterns that you sew in those yeah. <laughs> envelopes. Yes. The sewing wow. machine made patterns. Wow. I remember those. Yeah, yeah. That's a sad thing about dementia, you know, oh. and, and I think, you know, because my, my dad um, died of Alzheimer's. And so there's a lot of things I think about as far as making sure that, that things are dialed in um, for my family's sake, you know, in the event that that were, you know, were to happen, you know, to us. Um, Melissa put in the chat also, she said, I forgot to mention, I too keep my divorce paperwork in my safe. I do as well. And I keep the deed to my cemetery plot with my estate planning copies. Um, she wants to be married, buried next to her dad, so she bought the plot next to him. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, cool. my my husband's parents um, bought ahead of time. I mean, way back, it, it, and this was something of their age generation, this was something that they kind of did. And he mm -hmm. was in the military as well, so it had a slightly different, um, intent maybe you know but they bought um cemetery plots way back in the day and uh along with the service and every all of that was paid for and it was paid for probably 30 years ago so that when they passed away when his mom passed away um we were tearing the house apart trying to find all of this stuff you know because um, my father-in-law was was so grief stricken he he was not a whole lot of help with that you know but the fact that it was all taken care of ahead of time and we did finally find the old school booklet that explained everything that was covered and and what was in it and so forth so that's really that's important you know that that you know where that stuff is and that other people know about that as well yeah. that's my biggest fear yeah. is to leave, leave a mess for someone you know yeah. like my son in particular so I see so many people that have dust in their families and they just spend, you know, a couple of years just trying to get through the mud, the rubble and finding stuff and handling stuff and disposing of stuff. And mm -hmm. they don't even get to grieve properly because they're having to deal with all that. So my yeah. goal is to get more organized so that yes. whoever takes care of my affairs, you know, yeah. doesn't have to deal with that. And it seems kind of morbid to like plan certain things, but mm -hmm. I'm all for having my celebration of life planned and paid for and just say have fun you know what I mean I have my yeah. song list already done I have your a song list, list. No, I love that yes, that's so your awesome. what list a song <laughs> list what I, the songs I want played at my celebration of life nothing else is organized but that I love that's it. funny that's what's important to you right well my my dad I mean our situation this was a learning experience as well but my dad separated from the family and had no uh, contact with us for many years. So we didn't even really know where he was. Uh, and he lived by himself in an apartment and he fell and was put into the hospital for a while and then rehab for a while. And they, the agency on aging and the, you know, the social services said he can't, they wouldn't let him go home. So they tracked me down and that's how I found out and long story, but, um, Interestingly enough, when we went to move him out of his apartment, he had in this drawer in his in his dresser, he had all the paperwork. He had prepaid for his funeral arrangements. Wow. He had, you know, a few annuities and mm -hmm. things like that. And all the paperwork was right in one. Wow. I mean, we were shocked. But, well, you know, <clears throat> when when he ran out of money um, and luckily he was he was coherent enough that he would, I could get him to sign and get on the phone with me to cash out his annuities to pay for the facilities that he was in. But uh, one of the things I learned was that those prepaid funeral arrangements are considered part of your uh, net worth, I guess. Mm -hmm. So when we tried to apply for, uh, for assistance uh -huh. for him, that he didn't qualify because that, 
contract was worth more than, mm, you know, wow. that pushed him over the, yeah. So we had to get the insurance company to change it to uh, a non-revocable, you know, a non-revocable contract and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was quite interesting. So interesting. having all that, but it was once, you know, that ended up being easy enough to do, but just didn't know about that. But mm-hmm. having all that arranged that he, the way he did it, was such a relief for us because just knowing what he had planned for and that's just huge you know really Lori, huge. You, brought up, you brought up a great point Lori. what if he did all that work but you didn't know it and then you went off and right. planned the whole thing again mm-hmm. so great exactly. that, you had that great that you kind of went you know looking for stuff and found it because that would have been a bummer to well, that's exactly what what started Patty and I to, like on this conversation was like we our parents have paperwork and mail and things that we could go through, but do we have that if if something like this happens? Is, is it all electronic nowadays to the point where nobody would be able to find it? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, hopefully you have a trust and and you know, but what percentage of the people do that, but in the, in, at the same time, so much of what we have is online and not in paper documents that somebody might stumble upon if they go through our drawers. Yeah. <laughs> right, and, right. and I think that this whole, um, the, being faced with the coronavirus thing is what has really made you stop and think like, you know, I, who would have thought or who's planning to get this disease that could take you out so quickly or could decimate a family member so quickly, or, I mean, who who would have ever planned for this, you know? So in between that, I have a drawer with all my stuff in it, or I have a file cabinet with all my stuff in it and the, everything I have is online and nobody knows how to get to it, but me, where is that? You know, how do we bridge that gap? And I think this is a really, really good conversation. And, and out of, you know, out of every, unusual crisis we learn things you know that's at least the hope is that we learn something from from the stuff that we go through so i think in the the yeah. time that that we've got while, while we're sheltering in place i think it's time everybody kind of gets this together you know and um, i want to i want to look at the chat really quick um uh, nicole was saying it's a relief to have it done um, you don't want to go through this when you're great grieving. Of course, we were trying to get a life insurance on my husband before COVID it's been delayed and he's over 60. So fingers crossed. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's crazy right now. Yeah. We're going through that right now. I have a aunt that um, lives in Connecticut and a cousin, her son that lives in New York. He went in um, for pneumonia about a month ago and it turned out he had COVID. And so he's been on a, ventilator for a month and then his mother who lives in Connecticut she contracted the virus and she's now on a ventilator and so it's been very difficult because he's 56 you know he didn't have any we don't know anything about his paperwork we don't know what he has what he doesn't have and so we're it's been very difficult he has a sister that's trying to make decisions on both a mother and a brother on a ventilator in two different states. Oh, and, wow. Um, well, and, and, and uh, especially with things being so oh my gosh, that it's possible within a family that these things could, you know, could happen. A, a mother to a son or a father, you know, to a wife, you know, or, or what have you. So I think one of the big takeaways I'm, I'm taking away from this is I love everybody's ideas. I love the insights that you've all brought to this because we all have different experiences, right? Is that I've got a file cabinet with crap in it that I probably don't even need. Some of it I do need, but some of it I don't need. And then I've got all this online stuff that, that we definitely need. And, and we need to sit down and get all this stuff together, write it all out, put a place for it, make sure that whoever <laughs> needs to know knows <laughs> and, and just get, you know, get organized around this. Yeah. I'm trying to go paperless. Yeah, and I think like, we I just to start scanning stuff in to my mm-hmm. computer, like stuff that I think I really need, and I'm hold, holding on to with these file cabinets and things. I want to start scanning it into my computer, whether I put it on a Google Drive or a Zip Drive or just having it somewhere. I can really try and go paper free because it takes you declutter your life around your life and your world, then it declutters your mind. Yes. And I think that's like the age that we're going to have to be accepting of now. But it's projects, mm-hmm. lots of projects. 
yeah. I have to go, you guys. I wanted to say thank you so much for having me, and um, I look forward to the next call. All right. See you. Have Carly. a great night. Thanks for doing Bye. Bye, mm -hmm. Carly. Bye. And Melissa had entered that life insurance is very important, and check your beneficiary beneficiaries for your retirement pensions insurance bank accounts that is so important because you know some of us have mentioned going through divorces and things you know and making sure that your beneficiary is not still your ex-husband or you know or, or something like that or, or we we even had to go through this with with children like what child is is listed as the first beneficiary and so forth so important stuff yeah i think even i think even to the extent like i'm in the same boat where i'm trying to get a trust so that everything is under one umbrella mm -hmm. but you know if you think about how many different bank accounts do you have and when you started those accounts who did you you had to list a beneficiary back then and you could i couldn't tell you probably who i listed but i'm not married and so i probably put one sibling or another or even perhaps my mom, but it's interesting because you do, you know, it's probably something I'm going to put on my to-do list is to check those, those accounts that I do have and see who did, who did way back, you know, 30, 50, 40 years ago that I, who did I put down, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm coming up with a list of things to do now. So, <laughs> well, you guys, we're yeah, I think, the end you know, I, think I, I, I don't Go know ahead. if we, you know, like, I think we decided we need to have like both, electronic and paper copies of some things and have you know the right secret places for them I think I you know be curious to see if we use Google Docs like Cheryl's been using you know can you also if if you have the Google Doc that has your passwords for all your different bank accounts and things like that is, can you also password protect that document because I know you know Google Docs is secure but is there another level of security that yeah. we could have to make yeah. sure it was really the password right. doc. You know, I don't care if someone gets my my credit card, but you know, account numbers, not the full account, but you know what I'm saying, the account numbers to pay bills. Because hey, go ahead, pay my bills. But you know, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. passwords and things, you know, I think we'd want to look at the best way to protect that. Yeah, whether it's anyway. whether it's Google Docs or online. OneDrive or or what have you. You know, how do you make sure it's kind of locked down and protected and um, and, and if you are using both, you know, uh, electronic storage as well as some paper backup stuff that they're always the same. So nobody's having to figure out which is the, what's the accurate one, what's the right one. So. Yeah. And probably you need to have multiple people that know, mm -hmm. you know, like for, you know, if you and your significant other are together and something happens to you, who's the, who's that third person that would need to know where everything yeah, that you I have. have children. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the kids. Good. And maybe put it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Any last words from anybody? This has been really good. And I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, there's sort of a, uh, misery loves company sort of thing that, Hey, we all are, are realizing this is something we need to address. And some of us are way ahead of it. And some of us need to do some catch up. So I love the, the group brainstorming. I love the, the, the brain power that you guys have brought to this conversation. Any last words, any last thoughts before we, we end for the evening? Mm, just everybody stay safe. Yeah. 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 Stay safe. Yeah, and take this time, this time that you have some, that you're stuck at home to do these kinds of important things, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. That's, that's what I'm thinking. So thank you, Melissa and Nicole for joining us and for contributing so much in the, in the chat here as well. So um, I'm super excited that you, oh, there's Nicole. She's, she turned on her <laughs> camera. She's waving. We're both in Yuma. Melissa and I are in Yuma. I'm the one who commuted to LA for five years. Oh my. Yeah. Wow. So some of you may see me on LinkedIn. That's how I saw this, but I was commuting to LA and Melissa's a friend of mine here. So we're both in Yuma. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see your background, <laughs> this Nicole. This is why I didn't uh, turn on the I didn't camera. Brush my hair. I just stay off. It's like I did not. Yeah, see her too. <laughs> oh, you guys. Seriously. Melissa, Come on. Yeah, Melissa works nights. I work midnights. I've been awake all day. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm super grateful that you guys contributed as much as you did and, and that you came a long distance to join us here and so forth. So 
Um, there's always, I mean, this is what I love about getting smart, brainy women together is that we all learn from each other and there's always a lot, a lot of info to share, right? Yeah. All right. Right. Well, thanks you guys for joining us. And, and I want to really encourage all of you to, you know, keep, keep watching, watch our Facebook page, watch our LinkedIn page, you know, go out to Connected Women of Influence and, and make a connection with us and, and see what we've got going on. The minute that all of this lockdown stuff started, uh, we immediately began to pivot. How do we serve women? How do we serve people out there with the information they need to have in a timely manner? And, and how, how do we just change? Business has changed. Overnight, everything changed, right? So please, you know, follow us at uh, Connected Women of Influence and make a connection with us there. Follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. And there is one of these going on almost all the freaking time. So <laughs> we look forward to seeing all of you again very, very soon. If not in the ladies' room, then maybe on an Ask Me Anything. So thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. You too. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.